Welcome to chapter 3 of my hover building tutorial. It's finally time to talk about those thrusters. Thrusters got somewhat of a good and a bad side. They make you go faster, turn faster, turn in the air and accelerate faster. But they can also cause a lot of problems. If you often flip backwards while climbing or somersault over hilltops, spin out of control after taking damage, it's mostly the thrusters fault. In this chapter, We'll mainly be talking about thrusters placement, forward thrusters, backward thrusters, steering, thrusters, and hopefully in the end a little bit about the use of a rudder. In the previous chapter I also promised to talk about why light cubes are to prefer over heavy ones, but in order to not make this episode too long I decided to put that part in my next episode of How Flat is Flat. So for this video, just take my word for it. So I said thrusters got a good and a bad side. Look at this for example, if this is supposed to be a heavily damaged robot, it got some balance issues sure, but it actually controls fairly well. Now this is the same robot, and look what happens when we put thrusters on. It spins out of control almost immediately. So thrusters make you go faster, accelerate faster and make climbing easier, but they also cause a lot of problems as you can see. They are harder to construct with, there are also instability issues and loss of control after you take severe damage. And you can actually climb pretty well, maybe not as fast and not as vertical, but you can climb pretty steep without them. So let's start this chapter by investigating the pros and cons of thrusters. We got seven of the biggest thrusters, two backwards and five forward, that is 126 CPU. And you want to put it to a different use. Now you cannot put all this into armor because then your hover will be heavy. That would mean a lot slower and less agile. So you need to use some of the CPU for hover blades to carry that extra mass. Each hover blade swell can carry 68 edges. So we can solve 88 CPU immediately. 68 in two edges and one hover to carry it. Then we got 38 CPU more. We might have overflow carry capacity from using lighter materials like rods, curved inners and so on and be able to place the remaining edges without becoming heavy. Or we can divide the remaining CPU into one more hover blade and 80 more edges. That will give you between 130 and 169,000 HP. However, seven big thrusters also have quite a lot of HP, so the actual increase from exchanging thrusters for cubes and hovers would be roughly between 75,000 and 114,000 HP. Now, a somewhat balanced SMG hover with one model would be around 1.5 million HP, and a glass cannon down towards 1 million. So, getting rid of, in this case, 7 thrusters will therefore give you some 5-7% to HP for a balanced hover and closer to 10% for a glass cannon. But you will lose acceleration. Even with the smallest thrusters, acceleration will be doubled from not having any thrusters at all. You will lose speed, in this case 3.4% backward speed and some 8.5% forward speed already at OC1. And will also climb slower and not as steep. For the inexperienced hover builder or for someone who just likes a more tanky build and is willing to sacrifice on speed and agility to get that, I would definitely recommend just skipping the thrusters because you will save yourself a lot of trouble and still have a good hover. Let's start with steering thrusters. They make you turn quicker and also help you maneuver while in the air. And the placement of these are actually also important. They won't be of any use if they're too close to the center of mass. So you want them in the front and rear end of your robot. You can also make your robot tilt in the direction you're moving. Notice how it tilts with the turns or sways back and forth in this video. You do this by placing the back thrusters below the center of mass and the front ones above. The idea behind this is that you will have a better gun clearance with top mounted guns if you steer towards your target. The effect is quite small however and this is one thing I often find myself compromised with. Now let's move on to forward and backward thrusters. I made this robot so that it would be easy to try out and change thruster positions. Uh, you can place them above center of mass, on the sides and below center of mass on the same robot. You can pretty much try out different things. Always think about where the thrusters are in relation to the robot's center of mass, that being the red dot in this case. If you put the thruster here, it will push the nose downwards. And exactly the same if you put the thruster below, it will push the nose upwards. And the same of course goes if you put them in the back end. Having the thrusters placed below central mass like in this example is what makes your bot backflip when climbing. When positioned in this way they also push the front up while going downhill resulting in worse gun clearance. Now we have put them a bit above central mass and notice how it's immediately better. 
Having the thrusters above central mass also helps pushing down the nose while going downhill. The same is of course true for backward thrusters, but if you are going to place any thruster below central mass, it's them, because it will actually give you a slightly better gun clearance when you are backing away from your enemies. We also want the thrusters, if possible, not too far out the sides. Here we have lost two thrusters on the left side. Notice the slight turn. If they would have been sitting further out, it would have looked like this, and it would be a lot harder to steer. To make things a bit more complicated, the force from the thruster does only rotate around the center of mass on a hover while it's high up in the air, so high up that the hovers themselves do not function. On the ground, the thrusters do not rotate or pull around the center of mass on a hover, but rather around the center of lift. On this thing, the center of mass would be the blue line. I put weights on one side and hovers on the other to ensure that the blue line would be the center. And look now when we put some thrusters exactly on the center of mass. If the thrusters rotated around the center of mass, this thing would be stable. But trying it out in test mode, we can see that it starts to spin and wobble. Because of that, the thrusters will force it around the center of lift from the hover blades. Because of this, it's important to try to construct in a way that you will lose the thruster if you lose all the hover blades in one section, especially in the far rear and front end, where you will start spinning. And finally, the use of a rudder. The rudder is simply an easy way to stabilize a bot that is a bit wobbly in the air. Usually, really top heavy bots have that problem. So, if you have an iron distort on top and a bit of unbalance, a rudder can help you with that. The hard thing with hover construction is to be able to put all the things in the most optimal way in a very small area. Especially since the optimal placement of one thing often conflicts with where you want to put something else. In the next chapter, I will start to build a bot. I will talk a bit about different armor techniques, rod forcing, gun placement and other useful stuff while I progress with the build. Hope you like this video and subscribe if you want to check out the next chapter.